Uh, this is from Venom Vlog. Hey Parasites, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about Venom versus She-Hulk, which is a little piece of the lore that we kind of overlooked. I think some of you have mentioned it before, and we might have briefly mentioned it in a video, but I wanted to do like its own video on it, especially now that the She-Hulk show is out, and there's a lot of opinions about that show, definitely. Uh, there are people out there that are screaming it's the worst thing ever, and that it's ruining Marvel and the cinematic universe, and then there are people saying it's the best thing ever, and that it's uh, only elevating the Marvel cinematic universe. And of course, like I'm in the middle, I like I there's some things in a show I like and I think are fun. And there's some things I, I don't like and I think are cringy, but it who cares? Like it's just it's another chapter of a long going tale of the Marvel Universe. And at this point, they got to do slightly different things. They got to cast a, a little bit of a wider net, just like comic books have to at some point. And they try to target a, a different demographic or a demographic they haven't solely focused on before. And uh, and although I feel like it's a disservice to that demographic if they're targeting women for certain ages, because I feel like the show could still be smarter and a little better um, and still target that demographic. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, the show has its ups and downs, that's for sure. Um, so uh, but we're not here to talk about the show. Uh, but if you wanted to know my vague opinions about the show, that's kind of what it is. I'm kind of in the middle on the show. Um, but for this comic book, though, this is Sensational She-Hulk number 29. And, uh, and this was written by Louise Simonson, who I'm a huge, huge fan of. She co-created Apocalypse, the X-Men character, amongst other things, and also created Steel, uh, the Superman character, who I'm a huge fan of. So I'm a big fan of her work, met her numerous times, showed her my Apocalypse tattoo. She loved it, took pictures with her. She's amazing. Her husband, Walt Simonson, a legend in comic books with Thor and everything. Amazing, amazing people. And so... When I saw her name on this, I was like, I forgot she wrote this, uh, you know, because John Byrne was the one who launched the series and did a great job at it. And then she came in, filled in for a few issues. And then I think John Byrne came back to like end the run. Um, so in this issue, Venom's in it, but he's not in it that much. Uh, this There's this villain named Dr. Sanderson, and he's like a, like a time traveler, out of time type guy. And he has these students and he's explaining to them the fourth wall, because in the comic books, she Hulk breaks the fourth wall. She turns to you, the reader, and talks to you, much like the TV show does. Um, and so that's something they added to that character that John Byrne brought in, I think, in the early 80s run and then brought it back for this run. Um, so that was always like an element of her character uh, for, for a chunk of her history. And so, uh, so that's what's happening here. This episode or this issue is called The Fourth Wall and beyond and uh and tom morgan is the one who drew this issue and i think did a great job on it and the story is basically this dr sanderson guy has these students he's explaining what the fourth wall is and he says it's like that little space in the corner of your eye where you see movement and you feel like someone's watching and you but by the time you look it's already gone because it's moved back to the corner of your eye and he's like that's what the fourth wall is and apparently she hulk can just look at that blind spot dead on and and that's how he explains the fourth wall so i thought that was just kind of cool like fun little comic book thing uh, on how to explain fourth wall breaking um but in this you know she hulks at a trial she's uh you know trying to find someone uh, guilty or something i think she's like uh you know going against someone trying to bring evidence to show that they're you know a bad guy and then um or maybe i don't know maybe she's just there i can't remember like the full context because i think it continues from the previous issue but anyway, she's in court and she's doing a speech and Venom shows up and Venom has the white spider on his chest, but he has red eyes, uh, which is obviously different for Venom. And he attacks She-Hulk and they start fighting and the symbiote's coming out and it's wrapping around her and she's breaking free of it and punching him. And, and then uh, out of nowhere, Dr. Sanderson just says, OK, we're done with this uh, phase. I'm going to return Venom to the, the place and time I received him from. So uh, basically essentially saying that this is not Venom from current continuity, maybe not even Venom from this dimension, but just Venom, you know, so uh, so it could be Venom from the future, it could be Venom from a parallel universe, but we don't know, but it's a version of Venom, and he really just shows up and fights her for a couple pages and then leaves, uh, and, and she's winning, you know, like for the most part, but, uh, but you don't really get a conclusion to the battle. So the downside is this episode is called Venom vs. She-Hulk, and there's no real winner. <laughs> um, I feel like, uh, you know, Jennifer's really strong. She really is, and I love Venom. I think in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it would be an interesting outcome. I, I'm actually curious to see, because uh, we've seen Venom fight Hulk before, and 
you know, we've seen Venom fight Superman before, you know, and Venom has come out of both of those fights. So there's a chance he could stand up and go toe to toe with Jen Walters. Um, but also there's a chance, you know, uh, that Jen Walters could lose that fight too. So, um, yeah, I wish we got a conclusion, but this was just like a fun little, hey, let's throw Venom in there. He's popular right now and, and let's just use him as a character. Because later on in the book, Wolverine shows up and, and he starts, he, sh he sh yeah, teleported in by Dr. Sanderson to fight she-hulk and he doesn't because he's like hey i know who you are you're a friend um and it's wolverine in like his brown and uh, tan costume so even he might be from out of time and placement or he or he says like i'm you know where was where am i i was here and now i'm here so this dr sanderson guy has the ability to to pull people from the time stream and possibly other dimensions and throw them at she-hulk um but you know he threw a couple friends of hers so at her so that's why there wasn't just full-on fights throughout the whole book uh, there's some actual talking between friends uh, but this is a fun issue it's just kind of mindless fun though and uh, the downside though is it's it's a version of venom that doesn't really speak too much we don't really get an insight of 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 what is happening i think maybe they were too afraid to really establish venom as like like give him a, a strict personality or say he's not Eddie Brock. I think they were too afraid to do stuff like that because they probably didn't know the overall long-term plans for the character um, at this point in the comic history. So uh, although I think at this point he was kind of well-known and liked, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like it would have been nice to see a little bit more work into the character of Venom in this issue and maybe had the whole issue be Venom versus uh, She-Hulk, even if it is a Venom out of time. And then that way he could have said a few things that alluded to when in time he's from and what's going on in his life. Um, but still, you know, it's just a mindless fun cameo. And, and I thought we should make a, an episode on it, even though I think we brought it up and talked about it before. I figured dedicating its own episode to it and then also squeezing in my brief thoughts of the She-Hulk show all in together kind of I thought would be a better <laughs> use of how we talked about this issue. So if you agree or disagree, whether you like this cameo or not, I like it overall, but I, I have a lot of criticisms of it. Um, of course, I just love seeing Venom at any point, and I love seeing him interact with characters that he doesn't really interact with. And I think this is the only time him and She-Hulk might have met up um, in the comic book. So it's like the, it's the best we got, I guess, <laughs> whether we like it or not. Um, but I still want to hear your opinion. So let me know down below. And if you also have opinions about the She-Hulk TV show, because as of right now, three episodes have aired. Um, or, yeah, the third one just came out. So uh, if, you, uh, if you've seen them, if you're caught up to date, let me know what your thoughts of that show are down below as well, if you'd like to talk about that. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, I will have more Venom Vlog episodes to you very soon. See you in the future. Peace.